introduce yourself. My name is Tim Hotchkiss. I teach sixth grade math and science at Poplar Community School in Connecticut. I used to teach fifth and sixth grade just science, and then the COVID hit and things got switched around a little bit, as you all know. Um, as I said, I started out as an artist, and my wife wanted me to get a real job, so I started teaching. But teaching science, a lot of times, is play. So I have a little presentation. I'm not sure how well it's going to go. But we can try that if you guys want. Just to show some of the creativity and some of the things I do with uh, my kids in the past uh, and now. Things have changed a little bit in COVID. So let me share. Hold on one second. We're having another technical difficulty. So let's see, I'm going to get this. There we go. Supposedly. I think I've had this problem every time I've been on. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this is uh, some of the hands-on experiences that I've done with kids in the classroom. And some of the beginning pictures, this is one of the pictures that one of my kids took of me wearing the mask. So that's the way they look at me. That's when my hair was a little bit longer. Um, I like to go with creativity is inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. I really focus on the having fun part. So, as I said, I'm, uh, I teach sixth grade science this year, but I do a lot of stuff with seventh and eighth graders, too, and with kids from kindergarten up through eighth grade with the Connecticut Invention Convention. We tried something new this year because, and it's called the Algae Com Academy. And what the kids ended up doing, this was a week long project. Um, I applied for it last spring, got accepted over the summer and we did it this fall. And what we ended up doing was growing some algae in the classroom and the kids were learning about some of the stuff that we were doing with the algae. Um, some of the things that it's in, like your toothpaste and ice cream and stuff. You can see that this is a healthy, down at the bottom, it's a healthy bunch of algae. Uh, this is treated distilled water that the algae grew in. And so what they're gonna, what they're doing is that they're measuring So there's a lot of math involved in this. They're measuring, you can see what's called a suchy stick back here. It's a black and white stick that they stick down in the algae. And when it starts to disappear, they measure how deep it went and they can figure out how much algae is growing in their test tubes. They did, each group did three of these, they pour them in here and they let them grow. And we check them every couple of days. There, you can see a little bit of more of the suchy stick there. And then we looked at them underneath the microscopes. And this is just some pouring some out. And then they entered their, as we were doing this over the week, we entered this, we entered this data into their computers and we compared their data. 
So I did this with two classrooms. The next thing we did, um, another thing I tried this year is, Jake will tell you, I like to have people from outside the school come into the classroom because Jake's been in my classroom. Mr. Mendelssohn's been in my classroom several times, actually more than several times. Um, this year I tried something different. I applied to the Nautilus, which is the boat that uh, Dr. Ballard found the Titanic on. And he runs this. And the first time we met with the scientists on board, we were discussing how they mapped the sea bottom around the Hawaiian Islands. And so the kids saw pictures of that and they had one of the scientists describing how it works. And then the second time we met with them, we looked at some of the creatures. Now they were sending their remote operating vehicles, their ROVs on deep underwater, you know, thousands of feet underwater and seeing what they can see. You know, they were looking for vents, they were looking for, you know, squid, octopus, anything they could find. And there were some interesting pictures. You can see what their cameras on the boat are showing in the background right here. But these are the two classrooms and we did this at the same time, both times. This one, the one on the left is my classroom and the one on the right is my cohort. My door is right through there. Um, Mr. Gagnon's room. Another thing we did this year, because we're studying a lot about weather, we spent the fall studying a lot about weather and we we're doing temperature. So the kids built their, made their own thermometers. So we took isopropyl alcohol. And once they built, they put clay on top, the straws going down. And here they have it stuck in ice water. There's a better picture, I believe, right here. And they're taking a reading on their, on their thermometers. And what I do a lot is I don't tell the kids how to do it. I just give them the instructions. You can see the instructions right here. Because I want them to figure it out on their own. There's another shot. You can see the thermometer there in the beaker. And this is what they, and then we put one outside just to see what it would do over the day and went out and took readings on it. That's the entrance to my classroom there. And another thing we checked out was pressure. So as I said, I like the, I like them to problem solve and figure things out. So I gave them the instructions, balloon, and I gave them all the equipment they needed to put it together. And you can see these little group of hands trying to get the balloon over the top of the cup after they cut the pieces off. And this was the end result. So we did these in groups too. And then after that, they took a reading, as you can see there, and they just finished up on this the other day. And they did this for five days. But prior to that, to learn about pressure, we took a syringe, I gave him a marshmallow. One of the kids drew a face on it and it had a one-way valve and the kids were pulling in and out. So they had to figure out which way to put the one-way valve on, how to put this whole thing together and to be able to tell me what's going on and their classmates. Uh, this is from Parallax. Uh, so you can tell this picture was taken pre pandemic. And this is one of the things I want the kids to work up to. What I'm doing this year with the pandemic is I'm waiting for things to cool down before they can work in pairs. Right now, they just take their breadboards and they're working on lights. They're teaching themselves how to do lights, um, sound. One of the, one of what a couple of the kids started working on tilt sensors, which is this white thing here. Uh, I'll be working with the seventh and eighth graders and some of the sixth graders later in the year because we have to finish building several things. And one of the things we have to finish is building is the robots we started putting together a couple of years ago for the pandemic. But these are a couple that we did get put together. And this is just some problem solving. One of the kids was having a problem 
their light sensors weren't working. So they brought it over to another student. And there's a whole group of students around this table. And they're kind of all looking at it, trying to figure out what's going on. And before this started, I just said, what's wrong with it? Yeah. But they spent a good 15, 20 minutes trying to figure it out. And they finally figured it out. Uh, another thing I did pre-pandemic was I had a, a biologist that is involved in water quality in the eastern part of Connecticut and with the water conservation district. And she offered to come in and work with the kids to put in a rain garden. And so the kids all work together on their own. I mean, they work together with us there. Uh, so they, they built this rain garden, they had to figure out the math, how much water was going to come off and you know, how much square footage is on the, uh, the building. We have a small outbuilding at our school. <clears throat> and so they had to build, they had to figure out how large the rain garden was going to be. And, but they did all the work for it. And this is their end result after about two, three days working. And the local paper heard about it and the Hartford Current heard about it. So this picture appeared of them in the Hartford Current celebrating their rain garden. Uh, we used to do, I used to do biomes pre uh, years ago and where the kids, but this is the kids had three months to work on them. They had to work on them at home. They could not go out and buy things. In other words, they couldn't get little plastic figurines like you see down here. They have to make everything out of clay or recycle. We really push for recycling. And another thing we did, used to do, would be Project O, where the kids, Oceanology, where the kids would do um, experiments. The former picture was of density. They're doing their doing a squid right here. They're dissecting a squid. Um, we learned about seaweed and they were getting preparing to make some ice cream. And then phytoplankton. So they had to design their own phytoplankton and drop it that, from the second floor down to the first floor and race it. We also went out on a boat. So I'm just going to shoot through this. So they were bringing up the so I'm just jumping through this because this is a very long video. But this is, this is the exciting part for the kids is when they open it up and they get to see all the stuff in there. And there we have a dogfish, which is a shark, which the kids got to witness and take care of. Get a lot of skates in those too. Uh, the Connecticut Invention Convention, this is a trampoline that one of the kids designed, and this is at the invention. This is a child creating an invention that's going to help his grandmother get out of the car. And so these are just a couple of the inventions. And we did beach surveys with Audubon, uh, miscellaneous, just having fun up here. I put out some stuff to check kinetic energy. Uh, this is a hydrogen fuel cell car, which we used to make with, uh, with uh, Science Bowl. And these are kids testing out their remote operating vehicles before we went to the state championship. So this is my contact information. And let's do that. So I noticed a clock and I wasn't going to have a yell at me, Jake. Tim, there was number one, there was no way I was going to yell at you. And number two, the presenter who is supposed to be going next doesn't seem to be here. So you can carry on. And so I could have just kept taking my. You know, no, no, no. no. Now, no. now <laughs> we have some students. We have some students who are going to ask you some questions. Oh, that's exciting. And I, I would just like to make a comment, though, before we, we turn them loose. I have been in uh -oh. class, and I have watched his teaching technique, and he is one of the most unhelpful teachers on the planet. 
when the kids come to him with a problem, he says, I don't know, go figure it out. <laughs> and they go off and they figure it out. <laughs> but he's very unhelpful. So well, that's my job. <laughs> Sam and Aloria, please ask some questions. Talk to him. What do you think? Uh, um, that is very that is very interesting. Uh, you talked about robot building. What kind of robots were you trying to build? Uh, Parallax is what we're building now. It's a company. It's uh, 360. They're actually, and the ROVs is remote operating vehicle. It's through C Perch. Uh, it's free to schools the first time they sign up to it. So you can talk to your teachers about that. You know, it's from sixth grade up or middle school up. So if you're fifth grade, middle school, or it's something, you know, groups can get it too. And you get to build an ROV. They give you the toolkits for the first year and teachers go to a workshop and you race them. That's so cool. The, yeah. Um, yes, maybe Alex. We can try that. Yes, Alex. Can't hear you. Hello. Uh, first, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I'm still wondering how you did so many things. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I've been fortunate to have making friends. And friends will call up and say, hey, how would you like to do this like Mr. Mendelssohn does? You know, he's called up several times and asks my students and myself to do things with them. Uh, the conservationist from the Water Authority, she called me up and asked, because I've done stuff with her, because on during the summer, I keep tabs on, the, I live on a small pond, 35 acres, and she comes down, and my wife and I will go out with her and test the water, and I also test the water throughout the year. You know, so it's meeting people. Uh, um, okay. Uh, and second of all, hmm? uh, sorry. Oh, no problem. What? Uh, sorry. Um, uh, technical difficulties. I see that. So. Wait, let me see. Hmm. Try them out on me, then that way you can use the same questions for the next people. Uh, That's the best way to do are it. You, where are you, you now? It, what, what, what country? I'm in the I mean, United States. Huh? I'm in Connecticut, oh. uh, in a New London County. I'm about 45 miles from where Jake lives. That's about right, right, Jake? 45, 50 miles. Uh, it's very cold here today. That's so why I'm glad to be doing this because I didn't have to do the dump run today. My son did it. I got to be in here hanging out with you guys. So what do you guys like to do? What, what got you into this? What, either one of you can go first. Who's ever not having technical difficulties at the time. My mom. What? Our mom. Your mom. That that's good. Uh, we're also um me and my dad also uh, also Sam. We do EV3 robots sometimes. Oh, excellent. I like to see pictures of this sometime. If you want to send send pictures to Mr. Mendelssohn, he'll forward them to me. I'd like to see them. Okay. Okay. You know, because I like to, I like to also, if you want, I can also share your pictures with my students. We do that. I've had students from other schools send stuff, and we've sent stuff back to them. Tim, you showed uh, the parallax board, which is a microcontroller board. 
Can right. you just talk about what the students did with those boards and the LEDs and how they got the things to work? What, did, what were they doing? Uh, I showed them, like this year, it was a little tougher. Uh, we, I, we went over the history of what a breadboard is. I have a breadboard that's taken apart so they can see how breadboards work. And then I have the microcontrollers on there, which is like a little brain of a computer. It can take, you can program it to do something. As long as you have a power source, it'll do it. So if you have lights, beepers, whatever. Uh, and then I started the kids showing them where things are for writing the code for it. And one of the kids got into the sound code and decided to put a speaker on and turned the frequency up so high the other day that half the class screamed in pain <laughs> because the frequency was so high. I could hardly hear it. I could feel it, but I couldn't hear it. And the kids were like, this is hurting, you know? So we had to make them turn this board off. So I basically will just show them the basics and I want them to figure it out on their own. They send me videos of their stuff as they're finishing it and they're making these little, and they get a lot of the terms incorrect, but I'm not worried about that right now. I want them to figure out how these things work. Then we're going to go back and work on the terms you now so they can brush up on their understanding of things. That's fun. I also um, learned, made, I recently programmed the game in Sketch about animal welfare. Pardon me, I, I missed that. Um, I heard, hello. Okay, I'm there. Yeah. I also um, started, I also recently programmed the game in Scratch and about animal welfare. Yeah, a lot of the kids at school do Scratch. I've never done it, and I'm hoping that they'll show me how to do that someday. Um, uh, <clears throat> about the programming thing you do, uh, I also, I think, I, I um, we have some of those things, like the breadboard, and the programming materials. Mm -hmm. And I also do Scratch. That's excellent, and as... Mr. Mendelssohn will say, as soon as you learn how to figure out how to do that push button, you can run anything. If I can just, I know we have some teachers watching and I just want to tell uh, a real quick story that I think some of the teachers will appreciate. I was in Tim's classroom watching, not, not helping the students either, just like Tim, but just watching. Oh, <laughs> and uh, they were working on this uh, breadboard with the parallax and I don't even remember what it was. They've been working on getting it to do something and they finally got it to work. And they got so excited that a group of students ran out of the classroom and ran down to show the principal. And Mr. Hodgkiss is chasing after them going, no, come back, come back. You can't barge into the principal's office like that. And they barged into the principal and, and showed her what they had done. They were so happy and proud. And, uh, Fortunately, she was very kind, and Mr. Hodgkiss still had his job. But yeah. that's how excited the kids were. They just had to go show somebody. That's one of the toughest things I have about retiring this year is not being in the classroom. I would love to keep doing this sort of stuff for a long, long time, you know, hanging out with kids. because. You guys, you're not, you don't know that you can't do something. And that's part of the reason I don't tell the kids how to do it. Because I remember one time we were having a discussion with Parallax, because I had to meet with Parallax every couple of weeks with uh, Mr. Mendelssohn and some other teachers from California. And somebody at Parallax says, that's not going to work. And when I described what the kids were trying to do, and the kids figured out how to get it to work and write the programming for it. Following week, I showed it to them. 
or a couple of weeks later, I showed it to them, you know, and they were very impressed. I mean, that's why, I mean, you guys change, can change the world and figure things out. You're not stuck with, I can't do that like a lot of adults are, if you're given the chance to run. And it's okay to fail. I learned this from Mr. Mendelssohn. And this is our classroom. And it's become part of the school. You know, some of the teachers use it in the rest of the school. It's fail means the first attempt in learning. As long as you tried your best, it's okay. In fact, you learn more from failing than you do if something goes right right away. Yeah. Tim, I think, so our, I think our next presenter has uh, arrived. And, okay. Hey, this so, has been a pleasure. It's good to see you, Julie. Good to see you too, Tim. Thank you. Now, good Tim, to see the rest of you. Tim, even though you're going to be retired in a, in a few months, that doesn't mean you still can't come back and give presentations. Yeah, and I'll start working. Come back and show some of that. My, Innovative artwork you're going to start on, as long as it's <laughs> rated PG, please. Oh, it is. Well, a lot of it is. It's, it's a lot of math and a lot of my art. Interesting. So. And I like to see your guys' art sometimes. So if you send pictures to Mr. Mendelssohn or Julie, then just they'll forward it to me if you don't mind sharing. Okay. Thanks okay. for a wonderful time. This was great. Thank you, too. Take Thank care, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.